Hello again and welcome to Dan White Books, the book review channel where we add insights into the worlds of literature for both those who do read and those who don't. Today I'm reviewing the controversial 2020 bestseller American Dirt by Janine Cummins. American Dirt was released with great critical acclaim when it was first published in 2020, with reviewers praising the strength of its prose and the greater awareness it brought to migrants in Mexico. Indeed, the very copy I have here features numerous quotations of praise from British publications. There's even a quote from one of my favourite authors, Stephen King, on the inside cover stating, one hell of a novel about a good woman on the run with her beautiful boy. But sometime thereafter, a second voice gained power in the critique of this work, and that was from the people with a heritage from the culture this book speaks of. People began to question whether or not a white American author should have any right to tell the tale of Mexican migrants travelling through Mexico and into America. And they also had their fair share of criticisms regarding the portrayal of Mexican culture and the questionable use of Spanish phrases that are sprinkled throughout. I am not Mexican, you may have guessed. I have neither been to Mexico or any South American country, although I would very much like to. The review you are about to hear here is written from my perspective, and that is from a man living on a British Isle. Although I will be unable to address certain concerns others have raised in this work, mainly because I am not in any way familiar enough with Latino culture, I do have a voice, and I would like to review this book and also address whether or not authors have any right to write about the tales from different cultures. With that said, let's start the review. American Dirt is a 2020 thriller novel written by author Janine Cummins. It tells the tale of a mother named Lydia and her eight-year-old son named Luca, whose family have been viciously gunned down by a Mexican cartel in the city of Alcapoco. You may be thinking, whoa, slow down. But this telling is much in the fashion of the book itself. The tragic gunning down of the central character's family happens from the very first sentence. Yes, this truly is a book that keeps moving. It is a thriller in every sense of the word, and it is at times very hard to put down. However, at others, it is difficult, reeling from one trauma to the next and making for some uneasy reading. After the murder of their family, Lydia and Luca embark on a treacherous journey to the north, or as the book says, El Norte, where they hope to cross the border and find a new life in America. They are always looking over their shoulder in the fear that they will be caught by the elusive cartel that murdered their family. Lydia, who ran a bookstore in Alcapulco, was enamoured by a charming man named Javier, who came into her bookstore weekly to discuss his passions and love for literature. Despite the strong emotional bond they form with one another, Lydia is later shocked to discover that Javier is not quite as he appears and runs a major drug trafficking cartel in Mexico. He is a man that many people fear. The journey is long. Lydia and Luca go from a life of relative calm to complete despair, losing everything as they travel the dangerous locations in Mexico and ride the train known as La Bestia, translated to The Beast in English. It is a journey that is by no means easy, making for uncomfortable reading at times, as a mother does everything she can to keep her child safe despite walking with him through perilous danger. On the way, the characters meet two sisters named Rebecca and Soledad, the latter being described as a girl of exceptional beauty. Although this is far more of a hindrance than a help, you read of a long and arduous journey and struggle through Mexico where one bad thing happens after the next, but our characters keep pressing forward. That is a brief summary of this work. I didn't want to spoil it, but the basic premise is there. A mother and her young son travel through Mexico with next to nothing, all in the hope to emerge to a greater life in America. 
None of this is smooth. Many bad things happen, and I will admit reading through this book may tarnish your view of Mexico, because there isn't really a whole lot of positive to be said about it. There is the odd tale of someone doing good by them, but for the most, this is pretty gut-wrenching. I didn't cry when reading this one, but I can certainly assume that many will. There are particularly gruesome scenes, and one in the final third that will certainly stay etched on your mind. This book at times had me liking it immensely, particularly at the start, but then at others it began to seriously plateau. The start of this book is straight in the action, it's like running away from your chaser in a game of tag, but it does lose steam. It manages to pick it up again, then yet again it runs out of breath. This made for me a very janky reading experience. I feel at times like I, I couldn't read enough, and then at others like the constant trauma was getting too much. It became almost predictable in parts, although I will admit only for brief sections. The introduction of the two sisters, Rebecca and Soledad, is certainly one to portray how women, particularly how those who are young and attractive, can be treated rather horrendously by evil men. The ending of this book was not at all what I was expecting, to give it credit, and I'm referring to the near very end. It did impact me. It talks of an immense struggle to which some simply cannot endure, and it hammers this home with an emotional kick in the chest. This book manages to create empathy, and I sense that is what author Janine Cummins wanted to evoke in her readers. There is a lot of hate for migrants and refugees who leave their own country. No truer is that in the USA as it is here in the UK. I will give this book certainly credit for shining a light on those who flee horrific circumstances in the hope for a better future. I am undoubtedly sure that many of these tales are never brought to light, whether it be those fleeing from dangers in Mexico or from war-torn countries like Syria. It gives a perspective to the struggle these people face and why it is they leave in the first place. However, saying this, I did feel this book was trying a little too hard in its want to push trauma. It is at times overbearing, predictable, and often very intense. I found myself comparing this book heavily to the American classic The Grapes of Wrath. Despite not detailing the level of trauma American Dirt does, The Grapes of Wrath felt so much more potent and does really cast a massive shadow on this book because it simply did so much, so better. So with all things considered, I would rate this book a 72 out of 100. I can sense some people will really love this work, but for me, there was an unbalance that I could just not leave unnoticed. Before we conclude here, I'd like to touch upon the point I'd raised earlier in regard to an area of controversy surrounding this book. The question at hand is this, should an author be able to tell a story that is not truly theirs? I will answer this always with yes, however that does not in any way absolve them from criticism, and rightly so. I do understand that people feel it is unfair that this author has profited off the success of this book, while others, particularly Latino authors, have not garnered the same popularity. Like it or hate it, this book has sections that are fast-paced and enthralling. It is a book that has seen success, and one that does shine a light on something people are too often straying away from. It is a pop fiction piece, and you can be sure it has been edited as such. It's written to have the reader on edge at all times, and it does partly succeed in this approach. But remember, this is still fiction. Research fiction, which of course can draw criticism, but fiction nonetheless. It has seen success because it has captivated its audience. We are of course all welcome to our opinion on this topic. I am unable to judge the cultural truths or mistruths in this book, as admittedly, I do not know them. But I can assess this work's credibility as a piece of thriller fiction, and in that regard this is not at all a bad book. No author should be unable to write about a certain topic. There is no pen or keyboard that should stop a writer from creating what it is they wish to. And to live in such a world would be akin to the greatest dystopian pieces I have read and reviewed on this channel. Although some may not like this work, I would never advocate that someone of a particular race or colour should be barred from writing a tale they want to tell, because quite frankly to me that is a step in the wrong direction. Have your critiques, rightly have your critiques, as I have had mine, but do not propose censorship in your own right 
to disagree. My friends, thank you very much for watching another book review here. Um, always appreciate you spending a bit of your time to watch a review and uh, a little bit of a discussion there at the end, which I'm sure people are all open to debate. My book that I'm reading next week is the Booker Prize winner in 2021, which is The Promise by Damon Galgut. Um, if you would like to grab a copy of that, please see the video description for more information. The same with this book. I will be reviewing that in around two weeks. Um, come back here then and we can discuss whether this book is good or not. I assume it's going to be good as it has won a prize and I've not read the back as always, so I don't know what it's about. I'm going to go straight into this one blind, but join me here in two weeks time and we can discuss this together. Again, thank you very much for watching this book review. I will see you here again soon. Bye-bye.